Hey, what's up guys, it's Dewey. More Ashes of War to cover today. And we have the Strength ones to go over. Yes, I know you can just pair this stuff with any build, but these are technically under Strength, and when you pair these with a the Strength build, the Ashes of War themselves will actually be doing more damage. So like something like Ground Slam will just be doing more damage if this was Heavy Infused compared to something like Kin Infused. Doesn't matter what my stats are at all. So this is the way Ashes of War work. But yeah, as always, if you do appreciate this style of video, these do take a very long time. Especially the strength ones, they're like a fucking bitch to test, especially these three little fucking things right here. Um, but yeah, please like, subscribe, and just comment down below which ones you'd like to see next. But yeah, let's just get right into it with the first one. Okay, first up we have Stamp Sweep. This one can be used with great swords, curved great swords, axes, and hammers, as well as colossal weapons and swords. It does consume 5 FP on its initial stamp, and the follow-up does 8 FP. How it works is that you do this little stamping attack that does give you a lot of high armor and a lot of extra boosted defenses as well, which is really good. And the follow-up will do a decent amount of damage. It will hit like multiple times, so like with the first swing and the follow-up swing will do some damage as well. It's like a nice little AoE. But anyway, it's a nice little crowd control attack with horizontal swipes. It's good for hitting multiple enemies at once. As for total damage, it's really not that great at all. There's like much better Ashes of War to use if you want to do total damage. And it's definitely outclassed by something else that we'll just go over next. But if you did want to get this one, you could get it pretty early on. In Limgrave. Off an Asher or not Asher War, F, a Teardrop Scarab patrolling around. It would just be, I think it's an invisible one, you just... Kill it when it's roaming around and you just get the Ash of War. And next up we have the Stamp Upward Cut. So very similar to the Stamp Sweep. It's going to be only usable on Great Swords, Curved Great Swords, Colossal Swords, Weapons, Axes, and Hammers. That works is exactly the same way. So we have that nice Stamp which does give you boosted defenses and boosted poise. And the follow-up is just going to be an Upward Cut. Which will do a lot of damage and a lot of knockback damage so you can just fling enemies up in the air. Does really nice damage. It's just a direct upgrade to the stamp sweep in my opinion. Does more damage, does more poise damage. It is quicker. So yeah, this really... It's probably your solid option. It's like the equivalent of using like sheath. But just for larger weapons. Well yeah, definitely recommend using something like this as to where you get it. It is pretty early on once again in Limgrave. Be off a merchant somewhere around about here who'd just be selling the ash of war so you can buy it off him i think it's a wall master shack yes this guy here okay next up we have kick so this can be used on any weapon doesn't consume any fp and it's essentially a kick so it's not going to be like the other games here. you have to use this for like against turtles if you want to kick off their shield it can still be used that way but it's not as it won't work as well as you think um and it won't stagger larger enemies either so it's pretty much only used is to, I guess like small enemies that are kind of annoying that are turtling, you can use it against those. But if you're like PvPing against like turtles that have like larger shields, it's really not going to be that great. But PvE in some, against some enemies, it's nice to have. You can pick it up relatively early on as well. Off the same area, you get the Stampwood Uppercut. In the All Master Shack of that NPC, you can just buy it off him. Okay, next up we have Endure. This one can be used on... Any weapon consumes 9 FP, and what it does is that you slam your weapon into the ground, and during that animation you do get a lot of high armor, and then retain high armor for the next roughly 2 seconds, and boosted damage negation as well, roughly by about 50% in both physical and magic. And during that time you can just feel free to just whack ahead and have no um, risk of getting staggered at all. So it's really good for just using it, and if you want to chug your Estus, just chug your flask and you, you pretty much just tank any attack and won't get staggered during that um, animation of drinking your Crimson Flask, so it's definitely good for that. Honestly, it's just a really solid... Against the certain bosses that keep on attacking, or if you're just really struggling with like your dodging, it's just a, a really nice option to have. Just pop it and it starts flaring out a whole bunch of enemies, especially if you have like lower poise, it's going to be a really nice option. As to where you get it, exactly the same place. As last time, very early on at the Wallmaster Shack from the NPC, just bite off him. Okay, time for Warcry. This one can be used on everything except for daggers, thrusting swords, and whips. Basically, how this works is that 
you do this nice little scream that consumes 16 FP. And for about 20 seconds, you do get boosted uh, physical damage, roughly about like 10% extra damage for all that 20 seconds. And during that 20 seconds, your heavy attack animation is slightly different. So you do this nice charging attack, and the follow-up will do this nice charging uppercut attack. Now, this attack is actually different for some different weapons. So the attack that you just saw is what's used for pretty much all small to medium based weapons. Um, there is a separate attack user for like the larger weapons like great hammers, colossal weapons and swords. I'll probably show you gameplay just showing you how different they are, but the colossal sword and the large hammer ones are very similar to what you just saw. However, there is slight differences with the spears and halberds. So spears and halberds will get this nice lunge attack. Like a nice jumping lunge attack that would do like a bunch of pokes, which is really good. And the twin spears also get something different. It gets like a combination of the jumping and then the second part does the same as the great swords and stuff. So for whatever reason, twin spears are just different. But as to how they work in terms of their damage is really good. And it does build up their stance meter very quickly as well. So the stagger damage is really nice. So you notice they'll get staggered very easily and just open for a repost. Notice that with pretty much all weapons, so I just recommend Warcry and pretty much any of them because I do like any of the movesets that the um, heavy attacks do. Because you do, um, when they do charge, you do stagger them along with the charge, even on the largest enemy. So you will see it with um, the gameplay that I have on Steven. You will see that it's be staggering throughout the charge as well as like the actual attack, and you'll be staggered very easily, open up for a repost. Um, yeah, very good and solid Ash of War. You can get it very early on, exactly the same place as last time, in Limgrave at the Warmaster Shack. Off the NPC there, just buy it off him. Okay, here we have Wild Strikes. This one can be used on axes, hammers, curved swords, and great swords. Basically how it works is that you just do a bunch of these flurry attacks and get a whole bunch of poise during that whole animation. And you can just click heavy attack and do a nice follow up um, downward slash, which is really good. So you pretty much, when I mean like you have extra poise, I mean you're always tanking a whole bunch of poise. So as for the FP consumption, so the initial cast is two FP and then every swing afterwards is going to be 10 FP. And then the follow up last finishing attack will be 15 FP. So it doesn't consume much FP at all. You keep doing a whole bunch of attacks. It's not going to be doing much stagger damage. However, if you do pair it with um, affinity type weapons, so like things with blue with bleed, I should show the gameplay showcase me using the flamberge. But it was like a really solid option because it just build up. It could um, build up that bleed, and obviously we we'll stagger them that way. But in terms of just swinging the weapon and staggering enemies, it won't won't really work that way. But it's just really solid. It can be parried easily in PvP, but if you use this on like a flail, you obviously can't be parried, so it is a really option, really solid option to have that paired with that. Um, as to where you find it, you can get it pretty early on in Limgrave as well. All the way over here on this path, there'll be a teardrop scarab just patrolled along. Just kill it and get it to drop. Okay, next up we have Ground Slam. This one consumes 14 FP and can be used on any weapon, which is really good. Basically how it works is that you just jump up and just do a nice slamming attack on the ground. You do get a lot of high primer. Like as soon as you're airborne, you get a whole bunch of high primer. Does decent damage and add a lot of stagger damage as well, which is really solid. It does um, scale directly off your uh, weapon rating. Oh no, your weapon rating, your weapon level and your um, strength scaling. So obviously if you have it heavy infused, it's going to be doing the most damage because that's the way Ash of the War works because it's a heavy based Ash of the War. Have more, the more strength you do, the more damage you do, and the more upgraded your weapon is, the more damage you do also. So it has nothing to do with your weapon AR whatsoever. I was testing it with a heavy infused claymore, and I tested it with a heavy infused dagger at the same exact levels, and I was doing the exact same damage. So this is proof that it doesn't actually scale off your AR whatsoever, just purely off the weapon level and your strength scaling, and obviously the fact that it has to be infused to strength also. Um, it is really solid, would do a nice bunch of damage. As to where you find it, you can get it early on as well, in Limgrave at the Mistwood Ruins. Right about here, it's going to be a teardrop scarab just like rolling down the hill. You can just kill it and have it drop. Okay, so here we have Lion's Claw. This one can be used on swords, axes, and hammers. So not including smaller base weapons and thrusting swords. 
But how it works is that you do this nice pull Artorius flip and slam, which does a lot of damage, consuming 20 FP, which is pretty high, but it's definitely worth it. You do get a lot of hyper armor during its animation, and the damage will be immense and do a lot of poise damage as well. I was say you can see the gameplay of how much damage and like poise and stagger damage is actually doing, which is actually insane. Definitely recommend using this. It's definitely one of the better ones, especially because you can use it on most weapons. As to where you find it, you can get it rough like early to mid game, pretty early game actually. Um, at Fort Gale, so be guarded by this. Oh, this be a lion guardian enemy. You just kill it and have it drop. Okay, next up we have the Horror Lewis Earthshaker. This one can be used on any weapon, which is really good. How it works is that you do this nice scream, which actually does poise and stagger damage, and do this nice little earthquake, and then there's a follow-up earthquake attack, which con which consumes 16 FP each. You do get a lot of high primer during the animation, and as I said, so that initial scream actually does stagger damage as well, so enemies, even the largest of enemies, will be staggered by it as well. And then the initial earthquake will do a whole bunch of damage, like knocking enemies back, and you can have that follow-up attack, which will do a lot more damage as well. Obviously, it does take a long time to cast, so it's not really that viable in, like, the heat of the battle in some boss fights. However, against enemies that can be staggered pretty easily, it can make for a very nice option, because it doesn't consume that much FP. At least on this initial cast, a follow-up will actually make it a bit pricey, because combined will be for a 32 FP cost, which is on the higher end, but the damage is definitely representative of that. So it can be worth it if you really want to. Um, you do get this at endgame, so you have to defeat the um, boss, the Horror Lu boss, and then trade in Remembrance with Enya at the round table and get it to drop. Okay, here we have the Crag Blade. This one can be used on every weapon except for whips. Does consume 16 FP. How it works is that you just slam your weapon into the ground and then buff it with some gravel. I don't know what it is, but it buffs it with some. It does a little bit of damage. They get a little bit of boost damage, like roughly around about like 5 to 10% more boosted physical damage. Obviously, it does scale off your AR. I think it's a percentage of your physical damage AR. Um, but not only does it do that, it will actually boost your stagger damage also by a percentage. So if you are using attacks that aren't going to do stagger damage, it's not going to really do anything. It's going to be kind of useless. So you want to use it with weapons that are always going to be benefiting off stagger damage. So you'll notice if you use something like a greatsword, you will stagger enemies or you'll break their stance about like a hit earlier than normal. That's how you notice. So it's obviously best with like colossal weapons and colossal swords because like breaking a stance a hit earlier could mean like a lot more time saved as well. So it's really good with those type of weapons. I definitely recommend using it with your large base weapons. But yeah, don't really use it with any smaller type weapons because you're not going to really notice any difference at all because most of your attacks are not going to be doing any stagger damage whatsoever. If you did want to find it, you can get it early to mid game. At Kaled, roughly around about here, you can just get it to, you can just pick it up from here. Okay, next up we have the barbaric roll. This one is can be used on all weapons except for daggers, thrusting swords, and whips. So it's gonna be very similar to that war cry. So it'll work the same way, be a nice yelling attack that will buff your weapon for about roughly 20 to 30 seconds, doing roughly about 10% extra damage. And then for that duration, your heavy attacks will get a different moveset. So there are three different types. So for your smaller to medium base weapons, they're going to have this type of attack. As for the larger weapons like Colossal Swords, they'll be doing Colossal Swords and Great Axes and Great Hammers. It will do like the same similar type of attack, but just a lot slower. Obviously, it's kind of the scale to be that way. But you'll notice, like, the smaller weapons are going to be quicker, but do, like, the same animation. And obviously, it has, like, that follow-up attack, which will do this nice jumping around and slam. Um, the spears and halberds also get a different type of attack, where they just keep, like, slamming the weapon on the ground, which, honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of. There are much better weapon arts to pair with swords and halberds other than barbaric roll, but it's not too bad on larger weapons, because, obviously, the... The moveset will actually be doing a lot of poise damage, so you will stance break enemies really nicely with the barbaric roll, roll moveset, as well as doing the more damage on top of that for about 20 seconds, which is really solid, so it's not really too bad. There are probably better options out there still, but in terms of all 
comparing all of their raw based attacks, it's going to be pretty solid. Um, as to where to find it though, it is going to be mid game. Um, all the way past Ligonia. Right about here will be a teardrop scar, just kill it and have a drop. Okay, next up we have Troll's Roll. This one can be used on all large weapons, so they're clearly like great swords. Um, the Colossal Swords weapons, great hammers, and great axes. Does consume 22 FP, it will be another roll based attack. So we do this Troll's Roll, which actually will do damage, and you do, when you click heavy, you do a follow up slamming attack, which will do a lot of damage. So the purpose of using this is that you do have that initial roll, which you try and like knock back and stagger enemies, and in that time while they're staggered, you charge up your big attack. And then just fuck them up pretty much. So we'll be doing a lot of damage. It's a really nice combo. I probably still prefer something like Barbaric Roar instead. But in terms of just like damage in one hit, this is going to be your best bet and your best option. It is pretty cool because the Trolls Roar itself, like the Roar is actually going to be doing damage and more knockback damage and have more range compared to like the Barbaric Roar would. It does consume more FP at 22 though. But you'll notice that it does do a really nice amount of damage, as well as poison stagger damage as well. Um, as to where you find it, unfortunately it is going to be endgame. Near the Church of Repose, it will just be on top of a big rock, you will just pick it up and have it. Okay, here we have Earthshaker. This one can be used on all colossal weapons, swords, and great hammers and great axes, so pretty much like all like the very large weapons. Um, it is a two-part attack, so that's its first part. Which does have a lot of hyper armor, does nice damage, and gets a follow up attack. So, pretty much how you want to use it is that you do the attack, get hyper armor, tank attacks, they'll be knocked back, and then you can just use a follow up attack while they're staggered to do an enormous amount of damage. It is really quick, only consumes 10 FP on, its, on the initial cast, and then the follow up only consumes 5. So, a total of 15 FP and doing that much damage is really, really good. So if you're really if you're expecting like a heavy base build and don't really have much mind, this is going to be one of the better options, if not the best option to have. Because for how much FP that it does consume and how much damage that you do, it is going to be really good to just patrol through, even for boss fights as well, because it is pretty quick and you do get a nice hyper armor along with it. So yeah, I definitely recommend using something like this. Unfortunately, it is going to be like mid to late game at Lindell will be off an invisible scarab. We actually will just be stationary, chilling right about here. You can just kill it and have a drop. Okay, next up we have the Braggart's Roar. This one can be used on everything except for daggers, thrusting swords, and whips. So this one will pretty much play exactly like the War Cry. So how it works is that you do this roaring attack, which for like the next 30 seconds will increase your attack power, defense, and stamina recovery speed, which is different compared to the other roar attacks we've seen. And but once again, it will change your move set, but only when it's two-handed. So we'll change your two-handed heavy attack. So when it's two-handed, they will be you will do this attack. Um, it will be slightly different for when you use a colossal sword and colossal weapon. It pretty much do the same thing. It's look a slightly different. Um, as for the spears, it will do the exactly the same move set as the war cry version. So if you want to see the what it looks like, if the ghost get back to the war the war cry part of the video. And I think for smaller weapons, it's the same thing as well as Warcry. So it's all the same thing as Warcry, except for like just the base medium styled weapons are just going to do that different moveset. It does consume 16 FP, which is the same thing as Warcry, I believe. Um, but yeah, it, this one just does have the added option of that stamina recovery, which is really nice. I do prefer the movesets on the other roaring attacks, but... Obviously, the added option of stamina recovery is definitely going to be beneficial in things like boss fights and in PvP. Unfortunately, you don't get a different heavy attack when it's one-handed. It's only going to be when it's two-handed. But other than that, it is still really solid overall. It's just going to be just added along to the other roaring Ashes of the Wall, which is still decent. As to where you get it, it's going to be like, I mean, depending on how quickly you do the NPC quest line, but it's off the Dung Eaters quest line, kind of towards the end. So it'll kind of be end game by the time you do get it. But that pretty much covers all of the Ashes of War, so let's get right into the ranking. Okay, it's ranking time. I always hate doing the rankings for the Ashes of War because honestly, they're all like equally as good. It's kind of hard to just rate them because they can be very situational at times as well. But yeah, I don't think any of these are bad whatsoever, but this, these are just the way I'm going to rank them. Number one, we have Lion's Claw for the amount of damage that you do, for how quickly you can cast it. 
and for how much stagger damage you can do also, and just for fucking style points because it's cool as hell. Number one. Number two, we have Earthshaker. This one is going to be doing a lot of damage as well. Compared to its F FP consumption, it's probably the most damage to FP consumption out of all of the Ashes of War here. It does have a really um, nice hype armor. It does take like a little, like a little bit long to cast to do maximum damage, but it is going to be really solid otherwise. Number three, we have the Stamp Upward Cut. So definitely prefer this version of Stamp. The Stamp itself is going to be really solid. So this pretty much like a get out of jail free card sometimes if you're just going to. If it's hard to dodge something and you just want to be able to tank it, just click L2, hit up that stamp, and just have that option of going with the upward cut, and you can just poise through anything and just do a whole bunch of damage and inflict a whole bunch of poise damage and just fling your enemy up in the air. So yeah, even more style points. Reasoning against number three. Whoops, spoilers. <laughs> um, number four, we have Wild Strikes. This one is really solid with weapons that can get that bleed build up, so you can just keep spamming it, poise through, and tank any attack, and just... Um, build up the affinity meter. So yeah, really good for any um bleed, poison, or um cold builds. Really like it. I definitely like pairing this with something like the um like flails. Even though flails are kind of like shitty in this game. Well, I mean, this is the first time they're in the game, but they're kind of shitty with um in general. But with wild strikes, being that flails can't be parried, it makes for a really nice pairing because wild strikes can be pretty easy to be parried. This is strictly speaking for PvP, but that's a really nice pairing to have. Um, number five, Ground Slam. So this one doesn't get, it doesn't matter what your weapon AR is at all for Ground Slam. So it does the same amount of damage if you have a dagger compared to a greatsword. It just matters about how much you've actually leveled up your weapon and your strength stat. So if you are using a smaller weapon, so it's going to be very similar to how I like Golden Slam, which is going to be like the faith version of this, how that just strictly scales off faith and not your weapon AR. This will be the same thing, but just the strength version. So if you're using a strength build and have like smaller weapons, say if you're using like uh, straight swords or whatnot, putting something like ground slam on it will actually be a really solid option for just doing a whole bunch of damage and tanking an attack all at once. Because obviously if you're using smaller weapons, you're not going to really be outputting a lot of damage in one hit. But putting something like this will just really help just improve your neutral game. So it just gives you more options. Number six, we have the Horror Lose Earthshaker. This one is still really good. Honestly, just as good as the regular Earthshaker, but I just like the fact that the Earthshaker does consume a lot less FP compared to something like this, which consumes like a total of 32 with, the, with its full combo. Um, in terms of like damage, this one will probably be doing more damage than Earthshaker, and that that scream is actually really nice against staggering enemies that can be staggered. But if you're going up against an enemy that can't really be staggered that easily, it's not going to be the greatest because you'll be there like yelling for like a few seconds before you actually do your attack. Um, but otherwise it does really nice damage and against its regular enemies and this crowd control makes for a really nice option. I just think Earthshake is a little better because of its easier um, FP consumption. Number seven, we have Barbaric Raw. I think this one's just the best of the rolls because the added moveset that you get is really good. There's those bunch of different hits that you can just build up. Honestly, I probably could put this on a little high, but I just really like all of these ones. None of these are bad whatsoever. They're honestly all just as good as each other. This could easily be number one on anybody's list, and I wouldn't be mad. But the amount of stagger damage that you can do with its heavy attacks, obviously for that 30 seconds that it does last, you'll be doing more damage as well, which is really good. doesn't consume that much FP, but you just go around and just keep spamming that weapon, and you'll be staggering and then um, poise breaking a lot of enemies, which is really good. Number eight, we have Endure. This one is another really solid option if you're struggling against certain bosses. In terms of like your timing to dodge, you can just pop Endure, and you just be good to tank attacks for like a couple of seconds. You just keep spamming it, and just keep attacking. It just makes for a really fun tank playstyle. But yeah, definitely pairing with something like this before you drink as well is really good. So just pop Endure, drink, you'll tank any attack, and just safely drink your juice. It's going to be makes for a really nice combination. Um, number 9, we have Cragblade. This one's still really good as well, because anytime you get to poise break an enemy quicker, it's just going to be more beneficial. However, you, it only works with certain weapons. Obviously, it doesn't work with any weapon. So it only works with the weapons that already do have the option of um, doing stagger damage. It just makes them a little bit better in that regard. But it's only really better for, beneficial for just like larger type weapons. So And even then, it only makes them stagger extra, like a, a bit quicker, like on a, maybe another hit or an extra, a quicker hit will probably do it. But um, 
yeah, other than that, there's not much else used to it. It does have a little bit extra damage, which is nice, but I'd rather just have some like barbaric roar at that point. Um, number 10, we have Braggart's Roar. I just feel like this one is just outclassed by bar Barbaric Roar because of its moveset that the Barbaric Roar gets with most of its weapons. Um, Braggart's Roar is still pretty decent because um, it does get that F oh, no, FP, the um, stamina regen as well, which is really solid. So I do like that part of it. But yeah, again, this could easily be a lot higher as well, and I wouldn't be mad. I just prefer having Barbaric Roar just because of the moveset, but Braggart's Roar is still equally as good. Uh, number 11, we have Warcry. This one is going to be pretty much the same thing as Braggart's Roar in terms of the movesets that they get. Um, so the spears will actually be really nice paired with either one of these. So if you do have like a spear or a halberd, putting one of these on will actually cause the moveset, the charged um, heavy attacks to do like this nice lunge, which is really good. And it will um, do a lot of poise damage as well, which is really solid. But yeah, once again, just because of this load, that doesn't mean they're bad. I just had to rank them, so. <laughs> um, number 12, we have Trolls Roar. This one I think is like the more like the least useful out of the bunch because it is very slow to pull off. It is very satisfying when you do pull it off and it will do a lot of damage, but I just feel like these will actually have the added benefit of doing more damage for an extended period of time and can do a lot more stagger damage as well, which is, I feel like is just more useful to have compared to just one big attack that does take a long time to charge up. Um, but I still think it's pretty solid. It makes for like a nice fun little build if you can just create a nice build around with it, but yeah. Number 13, we have Stamp Sweep. I think this one is just like heavily outclassed by Stamp up Upward Cut. This one's just the better version of this in like every single way. Like only thing that this one's used for is like pretty more crowd control because it does like a horizontal swipe. So if you're surrounded, it's pretty nice to have, but I feel like that's its only use. And at that point, I'd rather just have something like Wild Strikes to like clear out a whole bunch of enemies at once if I wanted to have a bunch of horizontal swipes or Earthshaker, really good for crowd control also. I just don't feel like this one has much use when this exists. Um, but I still think it's decent, but that's just better. Um, but last we have the kick. I mean, it's it's not bad. Like it's a nice it's a nice attack. It's it's a kick. Doesn't consume any FP. It's like not bad to have, but I just feel like it's the most useful or most useless out of all of these because it's probably the most situational against like a few enemies. It might be really really good, um, but I feel like pretty much everything else here you'll benefit off a majority of the enemies, where this one you could probably only benefit off like one or two different enemy types. Um, but yeah, it had to be somewhere, so it was lost. Unfortunate for the kick. But yeah, that concludes my ranking and that concludes the video. But yeah, as always, please like, subscribe, and just comment down below which one I should do next. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Peace.